Um, Michelle Schneider, Chief Strategist at Market Gauge, joins us for more. Uh, thanks for coming on, Michelle. Of course, uh, the Fed cuts the benchmark lending rate by 25 basis points, as expected. So no surprises on that front. But I also like to take a closer look at the Fed's statement. So some examples, um, what it has said, inflation has made progress, and then it drops the word further, uh, and then, you know, back on to what the 2% target, but remains somewhat elevated. And then it also noted that the labor market conditions have generally eased. Again, it's saying an unemployment rate has moved up. Uh, how are you interpreting all of this? Well, it's interesting that um, he would change his language. Uh, and indeed, what that tells me is that what he does very well, which is sort of take both sides in that we're prepared for this, but we're ready for that. And, and, and that's kind of what has made Powell pretty effective over the years. But one thing that I thought he said today that struck me as the most interesting was when he was asked about stagflation. He said, we're not going to allow stagflation to happen, which of course, in my mind as a trader and an investor suggests a, a quandary of, well, what part isn't he going to allow to happen? The stagnation part of the economy or the inflation part in terms of the price of goods. And we know that the price of goods have actually continued to go up. We had some reports this week. My guess is that he's probably more concerned about the economy than he is about inflation at this point. But again, very, very diplomatically, he gave himself room to change his mind as he sees more evidence next year. Yeah, indeed. And also, I mean, the question is really how the Fed could move um, following the election of Donald Trump. I mean, Donald Trump has pledged higher tariffs, tax cuts, deportation. I mean, these could upward, upward pressure on prices and long-term interest rates. How likely is it to prompt the Fed to scale back on cuts ahead. And I, I note that in the press con, um, Powell said officials do not adjust their forecast until after a policy has been enacted or law has been passed. Well, I heard today that, and I think this makes a lot of sense, that they'll probably do another quarter percent cut in December, but then hold off in January. And that hopefully gives them enough time to really make a better assessment of what Trump is actually going to do when he takes office on January 20th. Because we know one thing about Trump, even though he may not necessarily follow through on everything he says, he's been always very transparent about what he intends to do. So that's how I'm looking at it right now. But the question is, is how did the market react today, which I thought was the most interesting? Gold went up, silver went up, and we're seeing a lot of other industrial metals rise. Uh, aluminum went up and copper, uh, liquefied gas has been going up, even crude oil rally. And, and now we have some of the soft commodities starting to pick up like sugar, and even some of the grains like soybeans look like they have bottomed. So... He may not anticipate, but our job is to. And right now, I think they're setting themselves up for a real conundrum as inflation does seem to be, along with Trump's stated policies, a real reason to think that inflation will come back big time. Right. And speaking of, you know, Donald Trump being very transparent in his actions, I think, um, you know, he has on multiple occasions publicly criticized Jerome Powell. And in the press conference today, uh, Jerome Powell was asked whether he would resign if Trump asks him to do so. And he said, no, uh, talk to us about, you know, what Jerome Powell could be in for until his term ends in 2026. I know the Fed is supposed to be independent of the government, but I wonder if he could be pressured quite significantly by the new administration, you know, which may seek to undermine the Fed. Uh, also, earlier this year, the Wall Street Journal reported that Trump allies, in fact, were drafting plans to bring the Fed more under presidential control. Well, first of all, we have to remember that actually Trump is the one who appointed Powell in the first place. So he chose him for a reason. He likes him. And whether or not he changes his mind, of course, remains to be seen. And yes, I thought that his emphatic no so quickly out of his mouth without any thought was interesting. Does that mean he had a conversation with Trump and knows something already? These are the things we'll never know as the public. But it does seem to me that unless he gets very aggressive in having to raise rates as inflation goes out of control, if he cannot convince Trump that that's the right thing to do, then we know that Trump has a tremendous influence 
and, uh, and, and, and what he wants to see happen in the government. And now with a full sweep of the Senate and in the, and the Congress, uh, and it's possible that he could do something more harsh in terms of Powell, but I wouldn't necessarily get too worried about that right now. I think that they both plan to be somewhat on the same page. And again, unless inflation gets totally out of control, and these policies, by the way, that Trump has in, on his agenda, tariffs, deportation, reshoring, uh, and, you know, increasing industrial manufacturing in the United States, uh, lowering taxes, all of that, that's going to take some time. So hopefully it buys Powell enough time as well. All right, Michelle, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us. Michelle Shanaiva, she is from Market Gauge.